We good? All right. Happy Easter, everyone. Hear these words from Peter. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by his great mercy that we have been born again because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Now we live with great expectation and we have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and the coronavirus. It's a good word that uh, I offer to you and a great hope we have because the tomb is empty and Jesus is alive. We don't need to be afraid. Uh, we welcome you to our live stream. I'm Dave King. I serve Oakland Church as lead pastor. And I want to encourage you to gather around your computer screens. I didn't think I'd ever say that. Or televisions or phones and worship with us. Sing the song with us. Pray with us. Open your heart to receive what, what God wants to give you today. Would you join me in our great confession of faith? Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ is coming again. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Almighty God, we rejoice in your great love and plan of redemption and the sacrifice that your son made to save us from our sins. And we believe that uh, he rose on the third day and defeated all enemies and we can live with this hope that we don't need to be afraid. God, minister to everyone watching our live stream. Make every home a sanctuary and draw near to us, Lord. We need you today. Just commit this service to you. We love you and pray in the name of our risen Savior, Jesus. Amen. He was dead, as were my hopes and dreams. He said... It would happen, but we were unaware of their schemes. He spoke of love, but they opted for hate instead. We thought he was the one to end our striving and pain. We believed he was the son of God, but then the end came, and he died on that cross. All hope seemed lost. Life, again, dark and bleak. I wanted to hear his voice. I wanted to hear him speak my name again. I wanted to believe that the cross was not the end, but my faith was weak. That long night ended, and then another. The third day dawned and I went to the tomb with my brother. The stone rolled away. The grave clothes folded. Made us wonder. What happened there? Was it true? Was Jesus alive? I wish I knew. He told us that he would rise from the dead. Could it be true? The end of fear and dread and guilt and shame and then I saw him and he spoke my name I saw the wounds in his hands in his feet in his side he was not dead Jesus was alive ruling reigning everything changing life would never be the same again because Christ the Lord is risen from the dead. Roll away, he is risen, 
saved us through the cross. Our hearts are changed because of shown for all to see, perfection bore our penalty with a grace so glorious. Immortal day the veil was torn, and mercy dawned the ground of force. As long to liberty, the freedom of humanity, with a grace so
Let's pray. Let's go to the Heavenly Father. Uh, Lord, you are worthy of all the glory, the honor, and the praise this morning as we have gathered together, Lord. Um, if not in this place, you have said the church is beyond the four walls of this building, uh, Lord, but we are the church and we shall not be shaken. Uh, so we just praise you and give you the glory this morning, Lord, uh, for you are worthy of all of it. We pray that uh, you would be with each uh, and every person kind of sheltered in. We know that we would find strength in you, Lord, if we only uh, lean in on you. So we do that this morning. We pray that you'd be with Pastor as he brings us uh, the message this morning. We'd be, um, we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Anyone scared this morning? I think I've asked that question a lot lately. There are good reasons to be scared. You know, that at any point, you or I might catch the Rona. That's what my wife calls the coronavirus. Or worse, that someone we love would contract this dangerous virus. Or, you know, that we'd experience job loss or financial hardships. 
Some may be scared of what's going to happen with our economy going forward and wonder if life will ever be normal again. Not bad reasons to be scared. But we got nothing on those Easter disciples, at least prior to the resurrection. We know that, you know, the 12 men who Jesus picked to follow him left their jobs and careers and lives behind to follow Jesus. They left their fishing boats and tax collector booths, and they had to wonder if they could go back. I mean, how are they going to survive now? There are a group of women who are featured prominently in the resurrection accounts in the Gospels, a bunch of Marys and a woman named Salome, who who we learn, you know, supported Jesus and his disciples during their ministry. They gave of their own finances to help fund the work of Christ. Did they have any left? And who would want to marry these women who associated with that Nazarene? And they all must have felt such disappointment and, and delusionment. How could they ever believe in anyone or anything ever again. And then there was that very real fear that the people who came after Jesus would come after them. I'm pretty sure when Easter morning arrived, they were, you know, trembling in fear. And things are about to get a whole lot scarier. Let's look at Matthew's account of the resurrection. Matthew 28, beginning with verse 1. Stand, please, for the reading of the gospel. Early on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to to the tomb to visit the tomb. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, and sat on it. His face shone like lightning, and his clothing was as white as snow. The guards shook with fear and they, when they saw him, and they fell into a dead faint. Then the angel spoke to the women. Don't be afraid, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead, just as he said would happen. Come, see where his body was lying. And now, go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead, and he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Remember what I have told you. The women ran quickly from the tomb. They were very frightened, but also filled with great joy. And they rushed to give the disciples the angel's message. And as they went, Jesus met them and greeted them, and they ran to him, grasped his feet, and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, don't be afraid. Go tell my brothers to leave for Galilee, and they will see me there. This is the word of the Lord. You can have a seat. So to add to, you know, the stress those early disciples, men and women were feeling, was an earthquake, Kind of like what happened to us here in eastern Iowa last Tuesday um, when, uh, you know, the skies opened up and hailstones fell upon our heads. I was one of the lucky ones. I only had, you know, pea size, but some of you had like golf ball size hailstones um, falling on your cars and houses. So in this time of social distancing, you got to find a way to get an estimate and repair work done. The text says... It was a great earthquake, which, you know, in our terminology today meant at least an 8.0 on the Richter scale. I mean, the kind of earthquake that levels buildings. I doubt they used the same scale back in Jesus' day, but surely it broke some dishes and scared some of their sheep. But the scary thing was yet to come. An angel of the Lord appeared among them. I'm not sure I've ever seen an angel. You know, maybe they're among us. I've never seen a 12-foot-tall angel clothed in white flashing like the lightning. And if you, you know, know the scriptures, you know that when an angel appears, that wasn't always 
a good thing. I mean, as often as not, in the Old Testament anyway, they brought, you know, bad news and judgment. The women knew this. That's why they were afraid. But they fared better than the guards. These rough, tough Roman soldiers that were used to doing battle with, you know, armored enemies, fainted like little girls. Okay, that was a little sexist. I think now we should say people faint like Roman soldiers because they went down. And some text says, some versions of the, the New Testament says they were like dead men. I know what happened. They had a vasal vagal episode. It's when the vagus nerve is, is triggered by extreme stress and, you know, kind of diverts blood flow from the from the brain, and you can't help but faint. I know that phenomenon all too well. I'm a bit embarrassed to admit how many times that's happened to me over the course of my life. It's embarrassing because, you know, I'm a pastor. I'm a man of faith. Yet there are moments in life, and it's not happened for a few years, when I'm so overwhelmed with stress, I'm incapacitated. And maybe some of you are feeling like that today. We need the words of the angel this morning who says, he is not here. Now he says more than that. But sometimes that's, that's all we hear. You know, I, I don't know if <laughs> those women at the tomb or the disciples were so overwhelmed with their stress and fear and disappointment that they, they doubted <laughs> that Jesus was alive. But I know that happens to us. We're dying here, literally, surrounded by this virus. Where are you, Jesus. We're struggling financially and, you know, not sure we're going to make it. And it just seems like he's, he's gone to MIA. It feels like it's, it's up to us to figure this all out, to navigate through this difficult time. Where is the help, the comfort? Where are you, Jesus? If anyone is feeling that way, asking that question. Hear the rest of the angel's words. Don't be afraid. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead, just as he said would happen. Come, see where his body was lying and now go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead and he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Remember what I have told you. It's the good news for us today that, that Jesus is alive. He has defeated this final enemy so we don't have to be afraid even if the worst comes. We have this great hope of resurrection, of reunion of eternal life. We also learn from the angel's words that Jesus is trustworthy. He said he was coming back, and he did. God raised Jesus from the dead, confirming that everything he said was true. We can believe him when he says, I'll never leave you. We can believe when he, when he offers us peace and rest can believe that he loves us <laughs> even when we fall he's there to reach out a hand and pick us back up and we also see from the angel's words that, that Jesus is is on the move he's active he didn't just head straight back to heaven he is he's doing something he's on a mission and invites us to participate with him we'll talk more about that in coming weeks but life has purpose and meaning beyond the daily grind, beyond what we can see. Jesus is with us. 
He's active in our world. And that changes things. We see in the women that their fear starts to dissipate. They, they are starting to find faith and joy and hope and peace. But there's still a little fear, you know, filled with joy, but also frightened, maybe not as much as they were, surely not as much as before, you know, they heard the news. But life can still get scary at times. There's still fear until Jesus shows up and he meets them, you know, helps them see that, that he's there. He's real. He's alive. He shows up with the 12 disciples and faith takes over their fear. He, he shows up with, with two who are walking on the road to Emmaus, we read in Luke's gospel, and faith takes over their fear. He shows up in our lives. Okay, he doesn't physically manifest himself. My wife has been taking walks to kind of deal with the stress, the heaviness of what's going on, and she found one particular street that she likes to go down about every day because some children have, have drawn on their driveways and on the sidewalk these big hearts and words of encouragement. You're not alone. We're going to get through this. And a couple of days ago, they had a, a basket full of these uh, Easter eggs sitting out. And my wife picked one up, and, and it just warmed her heart. It, she met Jesus on that walk and found new strength and faith. There's a woman named Loretta in our church who doesn't get out much when the weather's nice and there isn't a virus. But we called her recently, and she said she's never felt so loved as, as people from our church are calling her and bringing groceries. Jesus is showing up in her hour of need to encourage her and strengthen her faith. A guy named Eric had the audacity to have a birthday during the, the coronavirus so a bunch of our people showed up at his house with signs. They, they kept social distance. They threw a parade. Jesus showed up to wish Eric a happy birthday. I got a text this morning from a woman named Shelly, a single mother with three children who's struggling to make ends meet. And recently... She found out that funding was coming that she's been waiting for for two years. Jesus showed up just in time to meet her need and she's just filled with thanksgiving and praise. And then there's a couple. Doug had uh, a surgery a month ago. He had a benign growth on his inner ear so they had to go through his skull and it, it didn't go well and he ended up being hospitalized for the past month but as I called him as I, as I spoke with him on the phone Jesus was ministering to him through the nurses and doctors and he was being Jesus to them and faith was taking hold but his wife Deb was probably having a harder time for the last Three weeks, she's not being, been able to, to visit her husband. But Jesus showed up at her house as friends um, drove up with, with signs and honks and encouragement. And they did her yard work. <laughs> and one final story. Another member of our church named Ruth always full of encouragement and praise. Recently, she was full of salt. Her sodium level went high, and she had to go to the emergency room. So she called Mark. And Ruth is often Jesus to Mark. So Mark was thrilled with the opportunity to be Jesus to Ruth, took her to the ER and sat with her for four and a half hours, and she's home and doing well. 
I called Mark yesterday just to make sure I had the story straight, and, and he shared something with me. Before he left to pick Ruth up, he thought he probably ought to don, you know, a mask. He's going to the, the ER. And he remembered that his wife used to wear masks when she was fighting cancer 17 years ago, and he, and he thought he still had some of those, so he got in the closet and pulled out one of those masks and put it on, and her fragrance was on it. The, the flowery soap was, was on that mask. And it was a warm hug from his wife and Jesus. Exactly what Mark needed that day. Jesus shows up and chases away our fear and fills us with faith and hope and peace. You might have to seek him. <laughs> you might have to open your Bible and read his words and, you know, call out to him in prayer. I had been struggling, feeling alone and thought, you know, I, I got to do something about it. So I started getting up early and taking walks. And on those walks, Jesus shows up and takes away my fear. Expect to see him, to encounter him, to meet with him on this journey we're on. Be looking for him. And when he shows up, do what the women do. Fall at his feet in worship. And it's maybe in the worship that you'll meet him when you feel most alone, but you sing songs of praise or say words of prayer that he draws near to you and encourages your heart. Well, I want to pray for those who do feel alone, who feel fearful, who need that encounter with the risen Christ. So would you bow with me in prayer? Jesus, we thank you for your love, for your presence in our lives, that you do show up in unexpected ways, that you prompt family members and friends and even strangers to speak kind words, to offer prayers, to show up with groceries or toilet paper at the exact moment we needed. And I pray that, Lord, for those who need to know you're near today, that you'll minister to them, that you'll show up and they'll see you and their fear will dissipate. And use us, God, to be your hands and feet, to be your voice, to demonstrate to a world that you are alive and you are real and you're at work. Use us to be Jesus to someone this day. We worship you, Jesus, for you are alive and you are reigning. We sing Hallelujah to our risen King. Amen. As those of us on stage <clears throat> kind of stare out to a mostly empty room and a space that we normally fill with smiling faces and uh, handshakes and smiles and voices uh, that we can sing, um, it's decidedly different um, without each of you here kind of in this space. and. I think up until now or maybe moments before we missed a little bit of that and I think it hit um, Lacey and myself when it, it kind of came to that fruition that that we really miss you guys um, but there is a, a, a hope that he lays out at the end of the book then I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the old heaven and the old earth had disappeared I saw the holy city, a new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven like a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. I heard a large, uh, loud shout from the throne saying, look, God's home is now among his people. He will live with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them and he will wipe every tear.
He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There'll be no more death or no more sorrow, no more crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. And the one sitting on the throne said, Look, I'm making all things new. So write this down for what I can say, or what I say is trustworthy and true. It is finished. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To all who are thirsty, I will give freely from the springs of water. And all who are victorious will inherit all these blessings, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. And if we stopped there, that would be great. That would fill us with hope. But it continues on to say that there is a price to be paid for those that don't know him. And so this morning, if that's the case, if you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, you can. And it's just a matter of of admitting that uh, you've strayed away or sinned or there's something between you and him and believing that he has the power to change that which sits in between you and him and then just confessing that. Lord, we believe this morning that you have a hope for us, a hope that sits beyond disease and separation and the thing that, um, that pain that we feel uh, when we can't gather, Lord, but what binds us together is the price that you paid. So we thank you for that this morning, and we sing praises to you. Hallelujah to the Lamb upon the throne. You are worthy, Lord. By his stripes we are healed by his nail pierced hands we're free by his blood we're washed clean and now we have the victory the power of sin is broken Jesus overcame it all. He has won our freedom. Jesus has won it all. Let's 
stand together. Lift your hands this morning. joining our Easter service this morning, and we'll be back next Sunday, same time, um, maybe not here, but we'll be live streaming somewhere in the church, and we encourage you to join us. Um, one of the things I, I've been doing since uh, the quarantine bega began, I've been sending a daily email to uh, my people, and I'd love to include you. If you want to comment on the live stream, uh, send us your email address or email the church info at oaklandnaz.org. Be, we'd be happy to include you on this distribution list. I, I believe the Lord can use my words to, uh, to help you feel close to Jesus. I also uh, would encourage uh, those who don't have a church home to uh, um, support the ministries of this church. We have three ways you can give to our ongoing needs through uh, our website. You can text to give. If you text the word give to that number, you'll get a link and enable you to give, um, again, through our website, or you can just mail in offerings to our church. I do thank you for the faithfulness of those who have been sending their, their, their gifts in regularly. Uh, and we're trusting God to help our church during this time as well. Um, let me bless you as we end our service today. May the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, may this God equip you with everything good for doing his will, and may he work within us what is pleasing to him through Christ Jesus. Amen.